What is going on, everybody? Welcome back into TTP Sports and the Flyers. Uh, <laughs> they bounce back from that very ugly loss against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I, I guess we'll bring that up a little bit during this video, but really not too much into depth. Like, for that game, you were going into that with a very, you know, bad hand in general because of, the, you know, the whole defenseman situation and you were playing 13 forwards, 5 defensemen. That game was not going to end pretty, and it especially did not end pretty, so I'm not really going to focus on that game too much, just because I don't think there is a purpose for that. But you did need to bounce back tonight, especially against a very bad team in the San Jose Sharks. They are brutal. They are in the basement of the NHL, one of the two basement teams in the National Hockey League. And you needed to beat them, and you definitely did. Even though I was not the biggest fan of the way you played tonight, I think you definitely played down to your competition. And there were just, you know, it just kind of felt like overall with this game, they were the Flyers specifically. They, it just had a, a feeling to it, like they were playing not to lose. They were trying too hard. They were making many mistakes. Passes weren't connecting. People weren't accepting passes. Just some bad turnover, some sloppiness, and some you know bad defensive zone pressures, and some bad defensive zone breakdowns, especially on both of the uh, San Jose goals, which resulted in power play goals for San Jose, and the discipline was just absolutely brutal in tonight's game. So many penalties taken. San Jose had like five, six power plays, it felt like, and just two of the penalties just did not need to happen. Travis connecting, which is a stupid roughing, completely before a faceoff even starts, completely after a whistle, just didn't need to happen. Just did not need to happen, and then Garnet half away as he's forechecking. Puck goes the other direction, and he's back behind the play, and I guess the guy was frustrating him, and he threw an elbow after the result, and took a stupid penalty as well, so, just undisciplined night, very uncharacteristic night, but, you know, they found a way to win, and I guess that's the most important thing at the end of the day, even when they didn't play their best hockey, like, you, you know, you, you needed to be this team, you cannot afford to lose to, San, to the San Jose Sharks, especially with the other day, with, you know, many of the Metropolitan teams that are chasing you, they all lost the other day, the... Islanders lost, and that's probably the most team that's closest to you at this point. The Capitals lost, the Devils lost, you know. So you needed these points tonight, and you got yourself back into a little bit more of a comfortable spot. The Islanders, they're still six points behind with three games in hand, but at this point you still control your own destiny. You win your final games, the Islanders can't catch up to you. That's basically what you have to do at the end of the day. You have to win and, you know, just pray that they don't win. <laughs> That's basically it. Their schedule does get a little bit more difficult as the uh, days go along. Uh, I believe they play Buffalo coming next, and Buffalo just absolutely torched Detroit tonight. So hopefully Buffalo can continue that hot stretch that they're on against the Islanders because that'll be much needed for us, especially on Thursday since we play... The uh, Toronto Maple Leafs and that continues this uh, heavy gauntlet going into the rest of March because uh, it's Toronto, Boston, and Toronto in succession. And yeah, that is going to be stressful. That is not going to be fun. I am fully expecting Austin Matthews and David Pasternak to go off in each game because that is basically just what it is at this point because star players go off against this Flyer squad. And I, I need to see some fight back. I need to see some pressure. I, I honestly, I need to see a game like you did against the Florida Panthers the other night when you just make it, you know, you play that four check game, you play that physical style, you get under the skin of the other team, and then you find a way to cash in. That's what you need to do against these other teams. You just need to find a way to shut down Austin Matthews. Even if you can't shut down Austin Matthews, you got to find a way to score. Your top guys need to step up. I need more from Travis Konechny. I need more from Owen Tippett. And it, it was good to see him cash a bingo tonight. That was really much needed for him. Joel Faraby especially also got a goal tonight. Same thing with Morgan Frost. Definitely need those guys on the score sheet more often than not. And hopefully with this night that they had against San Jose, they could find a way to find some consistency going into this heavy gauntlet. Because they really need it. They really do. Some of the goals scored by San Jose tonight on the power play, just two complete defensive breakdowns on the end of power plays. One was on a zone entry where Mark Stahl just completely lost his matchup, and it just left Philip Zadina wide open to where he could just tuck it in behind Sam Harrison. And the same thing happened for the second goal, too, just complete defensive breakdown. Zadina's wide open for a tap-in. That's basically it. Joel Faraby spring on a breakaway. Morgan Frost, I guess you could say off of a broken play, if not, you know, a nice 
pass over from Travis Konechny from the far angle. And I'm not sure if Frost initially shot it and it got blocked and it went right back to him or he was trying to fumble the puck a little bit before he shot it into the wide open net. But still, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, you scored the goal. And it was a power play goal in that fact. The Flyers did have a lot of power plays in this game as well, so thankfully they scored on one of those goals. And then the final goal scored in the third period was on a delayed penalty, and it was a beautiful dish by Travis Konechny, cross crease through a bunch of people. It was six on five, so the penalty didn't even happen yet. And Owen Tippett just has to tap it in and gives the Flyers the lead, and, you know, just does the casual celebration, pointing to Travis Konechny for the beautiful pass, and apparently he made a meme face or something like that. That's what Flyers Twitter did or something like that. I have no idea. I'm, I'm just telling you the overall fact is, I'm happy you got the two points. I'm just not happy with the way you played tonight. Sam Harrison was definitely huge. He made a huge save in that third period when it was a breakdown. San Jose gets a breakaway, and he makes a brilliant toe save off the, you know, tr tucking attempt. So Sam Harrison was definitely huge for you tonight, especially when against Sa against the Tampa Bay Lightning the other night, he wasn't his best. And granted, I'm not going to blame that entire game on Sam Harrison just because, one, you were playing with five defensemen. And they were just, you know, peppering shots on net consistently. The Flyers really just had no chance that night. And that's what it came down to. No need to really blame Sam Harrison. But it, it really does show to the fact that when he does have an off game, it goes very bad. That's why his save percentage shows the way it is below 900. Just because when he's on, he is on. He could be a really good goaltender. But, you know, sometimes when the rails fall off and when he has a bad game, he has a really bad game. That's just basically what it is at the end of the day. <laughs> but we're definitely going to need him. We're going to need some of these top guys going into the back stretch because the, you know, the schedule just gets tougher, man. The schedule just gets tougher. Honestly, it just from this game, it, it just wasn't beautiful to the eye test, in my honest opinion. Flyers, yeah, they put up 41 shots on net. Third period probably was their best period, but between the first and the second period, it just really didn't feel like they... Like, obviously, yes, they're the more talented team than San Jose, but it just kind of felt like they let San Jose hang around. They let San Jose's forecheck get to them a little bit. They were letting San Jose frustrate them a little bit. And that kind of showed on that one Travis Konechny penalty. That showed on that one guarded halfway penalty. Like, seriously, there was just some, like, you know, a stretch of play in that second period where it was just power play, power play, power play, power play. For San Jose, penalty taken is just stupid penalties left and right. Can't be doing that. Especially against, I don't care how bad the opponent is. The, the more times you put them on the power play, the more time that power play is going to find a way to adjust. Just, that's how it happens. Thankfully, they only scored one power play goal, and thankfully, you found a way to uh, cash in this win. That's the only thing that matters at the end of the day, <laughs> I guess. Like I said, it wasn't the prettiest game by all means, and that's basically it. And if we look at, you know, the standings right now after tonight's game. So, so far, I don't think the standings are fully updated yet because the uh, Islanders did lose the other night and the Flyers won tonight. So, the Flyers should be six points ahead of the uh, New York Islanders. So they, the Flyers should be 35, 24, and 8 with 78 points, while the uh, New York Islanders, they're 29, 21, and 14. Jesus Christ, they got 14 overtime losses. They got 70, 72 points on the season. Uh, the Capitals, I really, really wouldn't consider them a threat anymore. They're still there. They got three games in hand on you, but the Capitals, they're going to die off eventually. Same thing with the Devils. Now they're back to a game in hand. And they have, and you're up on them by 10 points. Well, actually 12 points at this point. So yeah, the Devils aren't catching up to you at all. Pittsburgh, they're done. So that's basically the only teams you really have to look at are the Capitals and the Islanders. More the Islanders in the fact. I would only say the Capitals just because they do have the games in hand on you. And I guess if you want to look at other teams, just in case the Flyers do fall out of that third place spot, I guess you can look at the wild card standings because right now the wild card is neck and neck. The wild card is neck and neck. Flyers got more points than Tampa Bay, they got more points than the Islanders, and they got more points than Detroit. And the Islanders, they moved into that second wildcard spot because Detroit got destroyed tonight by Buffalo, and Detroit's actually on a six-game losing streak, so they are struggling. They are struggling mightily. So who knows what's going to happen with G Detroit at this point, and let's see you know, what the Islanders can do con to continue their stretch. So yeah. Right now, you just got to focus on your contests. That's all you can do at the end of the day. And just looking at some of the games around the NHL, really not much. Like I said, D Sabres, they pounded Detroit 7-3. The Rangers, they shut out Carolina 1-0. And there really mu isn't much 
in regards to the other Metropolitan teams playing tonight uh, for tomorrow on Wednesday. The Capitals, they play, they play the Oilers, so that might help in that, in that regard. And then for Thursday, the uh, Islanders, they play the Sabres, so hopefully the Sabres can continue their hot stretch and pound the Islanders. And then for any other team, the Devils, they play the Dallas Stars. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? The uh, Capitals, they play the Kraken, so they're playing a little bit of a back-to-back -back there. The Lightning, they play the Rangers, so that's going to be a tough game for them. And Detroit, I don't think they're playing. And then Friday, uh, when is Detroit's next game? Or unless they have a couple of days off after tonight. Uh, what is today? 12th? Yeah, today's the 12th. Detroit plays here. They don't play tomorrow. They don't play Thursday, it looks like. Uh, no, they do, they do, they do, they do, they do, they do, they play the Coyotes. So, eh, at this point, like I said, Flyers still control their own destiny. Just got to win the games that are in front of you, but it is going to be very difficult. <laughs> it is going to be very difficult with the stretch upcoming because, yeah, it's stressful. 100% stressful. Just look at the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. Seven games against teams that are, you know, really good. Seven, seven of the teams. Let me look at the standings right here just to compare the, where these teams are. They play, you know, they play Toronto twice. They play Boston twice. They play the Rangers. They play Carolina in, those seven game, in that seven-game stretch. Uh, so who else? Who else did they play in that stretch? No, it's Toronto twice, Boston twice, Carolina, Florida as well. So look at the teams that they're playing. So Florida, they play their first place in the, in the entire NHL. The Rangers, their fourth. Boston, their third. Toronto, their ninth. Carolina, their eighth. So you're facing, you know, top 10 teams in the National Hockey League in this stretch of seven games. Toronto this Thursday at 7.30. That's going to be an ESPN Plus exclusive game. So that's a nationally televised game. Then Saturday, 7 p.m. in Boston in the TD Garden. Then you get two days off. You're back at home against Toronto again. I have no idea who decided on the scheduling. I, I have no idea at all. It doesn't seem fair. It seems very stupid that you have to play Toronto two times in a span of three games. It, it's just mind-boggling at that point. Then on the 21st, you play on the road against Carolina. On the 23rd and the 24th, actually, you play two games at home, back-to-back -back there. Uh, Boston on the 23rd at 1, and then Florida on the 24th. And then you play the Rangers at MSG on the 26th. And then to close out the uh, month of March, two games here. One on the road on the 28th against Montreal, and then one at home against Chicago, Blackhawks, and Connor Bedard. And then you go into the month of April. Islanders, Buffalo, Columbus, Montreal, Rangers, Devils, Capitals. So Mo April, definitely not as stressful, but, you know, you're playing a lot more divisional games in the uh, month of April, especially, you know, with the Islanders and the way that the standings are. So that definitely would be on the shade of important there. So you just got to wait and see. Got to wait and see what happens there. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like I said, not not the best game to watch. It was, it was definitely a little bit of an eyesore. I really was not a fan with the way they played. But a win is a win, and you take those any day of the week. They don't ask how you do it. They ask how many. And that was the result for tonight, basically. <laughs> so, good win by the Flyers. Let's see if they uh, take that into this Thursday's game against uh, Toronto. And the one thing that just creeps up into the back of my mind, you're eventually going to have to play Felix Sandstrom. And uh, I don't know when he's going to play against what team. Does he play one of these games against Toronto? <laughs> I don't know. He's definitely going to have to play in that back-to-back -back against Boston and Florida, at least one of those games. So yeah, they're going to have to find a way to do that there. <laughs> they're going to have to find a way to do that. <laughs> it's funny, too, because you don't have Torts on the bench for these two games tonight and the uh, Thursday against Toronto after you know that whole fiasco that he had on the bench against one of the refs, Wes McCauley, on the uh, Saturday Lightning game. That game was just completely crazy. At the end of the day, so Torts was pissed. He was, I guess, he was trying to fire his team up or something like that, and that's just what happened. You know, the, the suspension was kind of soft, in my honest opinion. But that's eh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So uh, that'll do it for tonight, everybody. I appreciate you all for joining. I know the Eagles; they made some moves tonight. We'll definitely have a discussion on that tomorrow night or something like that, either in the afternoon or at night, depending on when I'm able to get on here and record it. So we'll definitely have that there. Who knows, maybe during that stretch of time, they'll sign someone else. So we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> so definitely stay tuned for that. You'll find it in your subscription feed. 
But uh, once again, like I said, thanks guys for joining tonight. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Does it give me a great deal of service? And also use the code TTP Sports twenty dollars off your first purchase at SeaGeek. Great deal. Don't pass it up. Thanks everyone for joining tonight, or whenever you decide to tune into this. I'll see you next time.